forward. Forward. Right. 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 Down. Down. Forward. 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 Down. Left. Forward. Forward. Forward.
Scott Fisher and a team from Ames are developing a tool they believe will enable crews to function well in space. It's called a virtual environment display system. The helmet can present the operator with a variety of 360 degree graphics. The system detects head movement and simultaneously reveals new visual information in whatever direction the operator looks. We can uh, take someone who's, who's been in a fairly uh, tight environment for a number of months and put them in a, a synthesized environment, maybe a pre-recorded environment where uh, we could make them feel like they're at the beach or some recreational environment. This prototype display allows Fisher to get a lift on a synthesized escalator. I walk over to the up escalator and stand on it as I would a real escalator. takes me up to the second floor where I can get off and turn around and look back down and then walk over to the down escalator and that takes me back down. Using a special glove and speech input, a person can interact with a synthesized environment. The system also recognizes gestures so that it, in this case if I point with two fingers, it's recognized as a gesture to fly through the database. And I'm flying out the doors here and then I'll fly back up above the room. So if I look back down, I see a plan view of this, the lab. When the system gets beyond the prototype stage, it also will be possible for a person to interact with a real environment at a distant location by means of video cameras and a remote controlled robot. One of the other concepts we're working on is possibly uh, the need to do some kind of surgical uh, procedure on for example, space station, where there may not be an expert uh, surgeon in residence. One of the things we're looking at is using uh, the glove and the display environment to give an operator, say on the ground or at a remote location, the ability to literally carry out that procedure on a remote patient. You have to open this up a little bit more. It's one thing if you need surgery with a well-equipped hospital close by. It's quite another if an astronaut needs the same surgery thousands of miles out in space. Scientists at NASA's Ames Research Center may have found a solution to that problem. They've developed a remote control system called telesurgery, which would allow a doctor on Earth to guide a crew member in space through an operation. It might be a way, in fact, for an expert, a surgeon, uh, who might be at, on ground or on some space station, uh, to interact or to direct uh, an assistant in doing a surgical procedure at a remote location. The system is still primitive, but this is how it works. Both the doctor on the ground and the crew member in space would wear specially designed headgear and electronic gloves. A computer would relay back to Earth everything the person in space saw through the headgear or felt through the gloves. The computer isn't being used to transmit images yet, and the images it generates are very basic. This researcher is trying out the system. What you see on your screen is what he's seeing through the headgear. It looks to him as though he's inside that computer-generated room. He can even manipulate objects in it with his glove. He's totally immersed in the synthetic environment and can interact with it as if it were a real environment. Once the system is perfected, it will allow the doctor on Earth to follow the crewman in space all the way through an operation. He'll be able to see and feel what's happening and offer direction. And that may be possible within the next 10 years. This is David Lucas reporting.